There's been some interest in my process for transferring um, a laser printed image onto an aluminium sheet and so I thought I'd make a YouTube video just to go through the process so you could try it for yourselves. So the materials needed for this are obviously a laser printed image. It's been worked on in Photoshop to increase the contrast and to make it much more black and white. A sheet of aluminium. The aluminium has been uh, sanded lightly with a 1200 grit emery paper and then given a light polish with some uh, metal polish and then cleaned off uh, with white spirit. Uh, on the back I've put some uh, parcel tape and that's just to protect it when we come to etching it. We've got some nail polish remover and this nail polish remover contains acetone and denatured alcohol and it's having um, both of those in the in the solution that makes the, the the process work really well. Some nail polishes have 98% acetone and I've found that they don't work so well but they are very good for cleaning up the plate once the uh, process has been completed. I've got um, something to apply pressure with. A wooden spoon works well, but because uh, I've got it anyway, I've got this Bamboo Baron. So I've cut my print to size to fit the plate a little bit better. And I'm going to turn the print over and place it on top of the plate. And then I'm just going to secure that in position with some masking tape just so it doesn't move while we put the nail polish remover on. So that's in place and then put a bit of tape down the, just along the very top as well. And there's no ink under the area where the tape has gone so that's all okay. So we've got the nail polish remover, put it in a syringe to help apply it and I'm going to squirt it on rub it over with my hand and then put some pressure on with the Baron through that piece of paper. So I'll rub that over, make sure that there are no air bubbles, particularly on the black areas. But after a couple of seconds the toner will get sticky. I'll put the paper on and now apply pressure evenly over the image particularly paying attention to the edge because it's very easy to miss the edge and then the toner will lift off and not stick. Just move that around, press a bit of paper so then the barrel moves nice and smoothly over the image. And we can apply the pressure without causing the paper to move and then the image will of course smudge. It's looking pretty good. And before the acetone has all evaporated and dried we need to peel the paper off otherwise if it sticks like it's starting to there um, we have to apply either some more acetone or you can in fact actually take the whole lot and put it in some water and the paper will soften and come off. Let's just try that. Well, we've got most of it off. Just put a little bit more acetone on there just to loosen it. Hopefully we can peel off some more and obviously you don't want to touch the toner transfer at this stage because it will it will just lift off so I don't want to touch that anymore I'm just going to leave that to dry and then as I say I'll put it in some warm water and the rest of the paper will lift off okay so I've got some warm water with a little bit of soap in 
and we just need to lift off that little bit of paper that's stuck. So I'll just put it in the water, let it soak a little bit, and then just gently rub and the paper will come off leaving the toner behind. If a little bit of paper does remain on the plate it's not crucial because the etching solution will pass through the paper and it will still etch the white areas underneath and of course the black areas we don't want to etch anyway so that's not so crucial. You can feel when the paper has pretty much gone. And so there you are. So that's now ready for etching. Well, here we have what we need to uh, do the etching. We've got the plates that we've prepared. We've got a container with, in which to do the etching. I'm going to put that container in a bowl in case of any splashes, but also it allows us to put some warm water in the area around the etching container and that will raise the temperature of the etching solution and makes it a little bit more efficient. We've got to make up the solution and that contains copper sulphate. I'm going to make up a half a litre of etching solution, so I'll use 50 grams of copper sulphate, 100 grams of table salt, and whilst not essential, I've read that it helps just to have 10 grams of sodium bisulphate in there. Apparently that helps to lift the copper that's produced off of the plate um, allowing more etching solution to reach the areas that, that we want etched. Um, I, I just use it and it, it seems to work okay. So next thing I'm going to do is to weigh out the 50 grams of copper sulphate, 100 grams of table salt, 10 grams of sodium bisulphate into a container, mix them up with 500 mils of warm water straight from the hot tap. So here we have the copper sulphate, the salt and the sodium bisulphate powders all ready there to have the water added to them. And so we'll add that in. And give that a mix up. Stir it around. And it can produce one or two noxious fumes off it, maybe a bit of chlorine. So it, this is being done in a well ventilated room. And once that is all dissolved and you can feel that with the stirrer, I'll put it into the etching bath. that around some more, making sure all the solids are dissolved. So now we have the etching solution made up of 50 grams copper sulphate, 100 grams of salt and 10 grams of sodium bisulphite. 500 mils of water to make up a half a litre of solution. And that's now in a warm water bath and we'll put our aluminium plate in there and we'll watch and you can see straight away there's some darkening of the plate as the aluminium goes into solution and is replaced by copper. And the bubbles, hydrogen coming off and the 
just keep things moving around a bit to keep fresh solution onto the plate. And you can see the copper rising to the surface. So this is a fresh solution and it's quite warm so the reaction is quite vigorous. We'll probably leave it maybe, so that's okay. Take that out and have a look at that. So we'll just move off the copper and just have run the nail across it and just see if we can feel the indent. I can't feel that much at the moment, so we'll put it in and give it a good couple of minutes now. And just let that run. So I've taken the plate out of the solution and now I need to go and rinse that off. But I need to do that outside. If you do it in a sink inside that's a stainless steel sink, the uh, Solutions here will dissolve the stainless steel and will we'll leave marks on the stainless steel, which doesn't make you popular. So that's been now uh, rinsed off. And you can see the etch resist is still in place. And I can feel there there's a good difference in height between the resisted areas and the aluminium itself. You can feel that that's got a good Good showing there so that, that should print quite nicely. So the next thing to do is to clean the plate off from the uh, resist and so we'll go and do that now. Okay, so, so now we need to uh, clean the plate off. We need to take off the backing tape. That's done a good job as you can see of protecting the rear of the plate and because that hasn't been etched it means that the etching solution lasts longer because you're only etching the side that you want to use. Okay, so to clean the plate off, we can use 98% um, acetone. This is also nail polish remover. It was a different brand. It doesn't have the uh, alcohol content that the nail polish remover has that I used to create the image in the first place but it's very good at just dissolving away any more of the laser toner. And so there we have the etch plate ready for printing. Okay, so time to ink up the plate. Just use a black ink for this. Just roll her on some ink. Work it in. And then we'll take that across to the press. test print and see how we've done. So I'm using a thick um, glossy paper. Uh, these are some old print uh, handouts. And about 200 grams per square meter.
and there's our first print.